Welcome back to my channel. My name is Masha. This is Agile Apothecary and here we talk about everything Agile and a little bit about Japan. In today's video, I would like to talk about seven ways to improve the team's health. For me, the team's health is very, very important. And this is probably the most important motivation for me to become a job coach in the beginning. So I'm really passionate about organizational health and team's health. I want to have more healthy, motivated, engaged teams in this world. And I'm trying to do my best to help my clients to build successful, healthy, engaged teams. If the team is not healthy, they probably won't be able to produce great outputs. And as a result, they won't be delivering customer value. They won't be delivering outcomes that we want them to. So it is very important to keep the team healthy. And while healthy can mean a lot of things, for me, it's usually being motivated, being engaged, being productive, being efficient, having fun, enjoying working together and looking forward to delivering better and better products to the customers. So how can we improve the team's health? Let's start. Number one, start doing retrospectives. And this is usually the most important thing any team can do. Do regular retrospectives, not just when things are going not great, but all the time, regularly, every couple of weeks, get together and talk about things that are going well, not going well, and about the new things you can try. There are many different ways of doing retrospectives, but the most important thing here is the retrospective should be a way for you to come up with new ideas, new action items, not just complain about things that are not working. So retrospectives should be action oriented. Number two, run a team workshop. So retrospectives are great, but sometimes you would want to take a step back and look at all aspects of team's life, not just the past spring, not just past couple of weeks, but everything all together. Whether your team has a vision, whether your team has proper understanding of the customer needs, whether you have a backlog, if it's in a good shape, if your processes are working, etc., etc. So things that probably don't come up at every retrospective, but you still need to look at and fix. And there are many different types of workshops that you can do. A very famous one is Health Monitor by Atlassian. On my site, you can find a team barometer tool, which is free. And if you complete the assessment, you'll also get access to a team workshop template on Miro. And you can find a few more versions on the internet. There are many different approaches, but it's important to do something like this once in a while, maybe every quarter or every half a year. Number three, discuss team norms. And usually this is something that we do at the beginning of the team's life when we just set the teams up, but chances are that the team was set up and team norms were never discussed. So as you know, every team goes through forming, storming, norming, and performing stages, but sometimes they get stuck in this norming or storming phases where they just can't come up with a way to work together. They don't understand how to communicate, how to interact, how to work together. So they end up working in silos and it creates all kinds of problems with team's health. So get together, bring people together and discuss what are the norms that we want to have in our team. What are the rules that I want everyone to follow and I'm willing to follow myself. So people will bring a bunch of ideas. You would want to prioritize them, sort them out and agree on certain norms. And this list will be refined as you move forward, as you continue working together with the team. But hopefully it will help you to set a starting point and get closer to this performing stage and get your team healthier. Number four, do daily stand-ups or change the way you're doing stand-ups. So a lot of teams are doing stand-ups but not doing them really well. So it becomes very formal. It becomes about reporting what I worked on, what I'm going to work on with the only purpose to show to people that you're busy. Stand-ups are not about this. Stand-ups are about making sure that we are 
all on the same page about our priorities, what we're working, about dependencies, about the blockers and the problems. Stand-ups should be dynamic, should be fast, engaging, interesting and fun. So you can introduce some fun icebreakers for the stand-ups. You can encourage people to change slightly the approach. If you're not using your board, you can start using your board, whether it's Trello or Jira or whatever tool you're using, look at that. But stand-up should not be about reporting, should not be about telling people what you worked on. Sure, it's a part of it, but it's all about information sharing and staying on the same page. So limit the sharing to important parts and focus on resolving the problems and raising the, those problems in the first place. Number five, make sure that the team has all the tools they need. Quite often, a team might be struggling just because they do backlog management in, let's say, Excel, or that they don't have the right tools for the purposes that they need, whatever it is, maybe some software, maybe the physical space that they need to have discussions, maybe communication tools. So explore the processes, explore the needs of the teams and get them those licenses, solve those issues and make sure that they have all the tools, they have access to the tools and also make sure that the process of getting new tools, getting new software or equipment or whatever they need is very simple uh, whenever they need to onboard new members, for example, because quite often that also becomes a big issue and creates a lot of tension in the team. Number six involve your stakeholders. What happens quite often is that stakeholders are quite detached from the team and stakeholders could be your managers, could be other teams, could be customers, vendors, etc. But they are sitting quite far from the team. They might attend certain reviews or demos that the team is doing, but um, they might not have visibility into what the team is doing and because of that they might send a lot of requirements to the team everything being super urgent just because they don't understand how busy the team is or what are the priorities of the team so there is no one recipe of how to do this because there are different types of stakeholders and different sizes of organization but the rule of thumb is that your stakeholders need to be engaged into the product reviews that you're doing so you need to be transparent about your progress with your stakeholders and this should be two-way communication so it never should be just the stakeholders telling you what to do and you taking everything in and then stressing out how to get all those things done but also it should not be just you telling stakeholders this is what we're doing and not getting any feedback or any questions so create a place where you can communicate transparently and openly with your stakeholders in both ways so you share information about what you're doing what are your priorities what are your plans what is your roadmap and stakeholders are able to ask questions and share the feedback Number seven, celebrate failures. In agile teams, well, in any teams, we really want to create psychological safety. And psychological safety is all about being able to raise things up when something is not going well or when you disagree with someone's opinion, when you see that something is not working. And if people are afraid of failures, if people are afraid of criticism, they will never be able to speak up unless they have a lot of guts. And you really want to create an atmosphere where failure is okay where disagreement in a team a healthy disagreement is okay so a good place to start is celebrating failures agile teams we want them to do experimentation and in any experiment there can be a successful outcome as well as a failure as an outcome well technically we don't call it that we talk about rejecting or failing to reject our null hypothesis but let's call it failure or success for the simplicity so we can have success we can have failure and if we treat failure as something bad we will be discouraged from doing experimentation after all because we never know what would be the outcome if we treat failure as a learning if we celebrate our failures 
the team will be able to do more experimentation to unleash its full potential and it also would create a foundation for psychological safety which is absolutely critical for team's health what do you think about those seven ways of improving the team's health let me know in the comments don't forget to subscribe and share this video and i will appreciate any kind of comments or feedback and i will see you in the next video